everybody, Jeff Bernhardt, your executive gardener here. Hey, I'm here at the Community Garden in Missouri City, Texas, which is a southern suburb uh, of Houston, Texas. And uh, in Missouri City here, as you know from my channel, if you're a subscriber, we built a community garden here. I'll show you a little bit about the community garden, but it is in the middle of July here at the community garden. And uh, most of you in other parts of the country, Zone 2, Zone 3, Zone 4, Zone 5, even Zone 6, you're all celebrating because it's summertime and you can plant. Well, in Houston, Texas, our planting season is just about over. It's just too dang hot here in Houston to grow anything. But there are a few things that will grow here uh, in the garden in the middle of the summer. I'll show them to you. Uh, but for the most part, things like tomatoes, squash, all that, done. Over for the season. So um, what I'll show you is um, what's kind of growing here in uh, the Missouri City Community Garden. I'll give you a little bit of a tour. And uh, this is the type of plants you want to grow in the middle of July in a very tropical environment like Houston. Right now I'm standing here, it's uh, about 11 o'clock in the morning and it's 95 degrees. 100 plus percent humidity, it's just a downright swamp. Uh, so we'll show you a little bit about the, the garden, what grows in the middle of the summer, what goes well in the middle of the summer. And uh, one last thing before I get on the other side of the camera, um, if you live in a community in an urban area, a bit of a food desert like we are here, I encourage you uh, to participate with local municipalities, local organizations, and build a community garden like the one I'm going to show you. It really makes a difference. I can tell you since we started this thing up, I started this with several great people several months ago. Um, it's made a huge difference in the lives of a number of uh, adults and even children that now understand what fresh produce tastes like. So uh, I'm going to give you a quick tour in the middle of the summer, what grows in an inner city community garden in mid-July in Houston, Texas. Stay tuned, I'll get on the other side of the camera. So let me show you what the garden looks like. It's a gigantic garden, about 150 feet by 100 feet, maybe 200 feet by 100 feet. and uh, uh, I'm standing in the back of the garden, very back, and you'll see we have about 20, 25 irrigated beds here. And uh, all around this fence, there's about a 12 foot fence, and it goes down too to keep the pest out. Each bed is individually irrigated on a timer, and we have various uh, plants here. So um, it's a gigantic garden, there's plenty of room for growth. As you'll see, we have some dwarf fruit trees that are just in the first year. Uh, but uh, they'll be growing. You'll see this here. We're going to be putting up um, little strawberry beds for kids to pick strawberries. Um, the kids had a blast this year in picking uh, cherry tomatoes. That was a big uh, hit. But um, here's the garden, but I'm going to head over here to the first bed to start with okra. So okra loves heat, loves the middle of the July, and uh, I can tell you they're prolific plants. So most of the okra was picked yesterday. Uh, we have a group of volunteers that comes out here, but if you're not familiar with okra, I'll show you what okra looks like. That's an okra plant. You can see at the top, this is the actual okra. And the interesting thing about okra, you'll see, is they pr produce beautiful flowers at the top. And um, uh, just gorgeous flowers. And uh, I didn't even know this uh, before we started growing this, but at the top, you'll see, here's where the okra grows. So once the okra starts growing, it's just prolific. And um, you can see some over there as well. Um, it grows extremely well. But again, th this is a beautiful plant. A lot of people, especially in the South, like okra. They grew up, with, they grew up eating okra. And, but look at these beautiful flowers that are on the top of the okra plant. So we have a whole uh, bed here of okra that's producing uh, uh, a ton of this vegetable. Here's a good shot of one you can see right there. But most of the uh, larger size, they grow to be about tw 10 to 12 inches uh, in size in our bed. Some a little bigger, they pick them off every week, but they grow very quickly. So you're seeing the day after everything has been picked. So here's another, certainly, bed of okra. So uh, we'll take, over, uh, take a look on uh, one of the other beds here. Uh, corn. So most of you that live in the south know that corn grows very well. So if you take a look here, the corn's doing very well. Uh, a good size, not exactly ripe to be picked, but uh, within a little bit of time it will be picked. And uh, we will have uh, a good amount of corn here for 
uh, people that help. We, we do give the volunteers in the garden some of the produce. And we had so much produce from this garden this year, we actually donated it to several uh, shelters that feed the hungry, feed the homeless, and feed those that are in need. So a great, ba uh, great uh, way to give back. If you'll look, at, if you saw my shirt at the beginning of the video, it says "Give more." I think that's what all of us should do. We uh, this is a little editorial, but I realized several years ago we all live in a society where all we do is take. We take a paycheck. We go to work. We take all the resources from society. Uh, but now it's time to give back. So community gardens are a great way to give back. And here's a nice piece of uh, corn right there you can see. So the corn's doing well. Uh, and I'll give you a snapshot of some of the other things that are growing here in the Missouri City, Texas community garden. So habanero peppers, hot peppers, all types of peppers you can see here. Love growing in the heat. So um, uh, no problem if you live in... Florida, New Orleans, North Carolina, Georgia, any of the southern states, you can see peppers love the heat. So you'll see a number of peppers there. I'm not a hot, a hot, hot pepper guy myself, but uh, you can see there, um, these plants are just prolific. And one of the things I wanted to say is that when you grow a garden, and I've seen other people uh, talk about it, but each of these, as you can see, has uh, drip hoses that run twice a day. But what we did is we didn't, we didn't uh, cheap out. We actually went with the best soil that money could buy, and it did return dividends. So each of these plants, as you'll notice, and I'll tune in on a few other pepper plants here, have just produced, overproduced the amount of peppers. It's unbelievable. Um, so as you can see here, we do have peppers in the community garden every week we produce about 50 to 100 Some volunteers take what they can and others go to the needy and those that uh, aren't as fortunate as some of us so um, as you'll see also what we did a good idea in the community garden is to plant uh, flowers different type of flower plants they attract the bees which of course are the pollinators for the garden uh, so uh, great idea plant uh, flowers that will attract bees to help pollinate uh, your garden. So this is another pepper plant. I wanted to show you because this, this proves my point about the soil. This is a Caribbean hot pepper. Uh, the red ones, they turn red. So some of them, have, most of them that have turned red have uh, been picked off. You can see here's one that's getting ready to turn red. Not quite red yet, but look at this plant. Look at how much fruit, how many peppers are on this plant. It is absolutely remarkable. And actually here's a uh, there you go. You can see a, a red one right there. There's a red uh, pepper plant. Uh, you can see that. But look how prolific this plant is. It's loaded. I mean, have you ever seen such a thing? Look at all these peppers. I mean, it's just, uh, there's hundreds of them on this plant. So, again, this has everything to do with this. The soil. Don't cheap out in your soil. Make sure you get soil that's rich. An NPK and all the micronutrients, and uh, it will pay dividends. And again, I'll show you another another pepper plant. Um, it's a different variety here, but look how much fruit is on this plant. I mean, look at this. I mean, it's just loaded with fruit. Here's a sweet banana, and this has actually been uh, this one plant I know has put off about 200 peppers this year. But again, it's loaded. And this is late in the season, and all the others. So pay attention. Put time into your soil and it will reward dividends. Um, there's no question. Uh, there's no magic to the success. It's always been that way. The better the nutrients in your soil, the better production of fruit and vegetables you'll get. Uh, so let me show you one other thing that grows very well in Houston, Texas in the summer. The watermelon grows very well in Houston, Texas. Now, you know, if you're a square foot gardener, I'm not sure that I'd recommend doing watermelon. I think we won't do it this year, next year. It's cheaper to buy in stores, but it takes up, you see the vines go everywhere. And the ones that produce, uh, I mean, that's going to be a nice one. But we've actually had some issues, not so much with others, but the watermelons seem to be getting, uh, some of the pests starting to get to the watermelons. There's another one right there. So in this bed, I mean, this bed has got to be, 25, 30 feet long. Take a look at this. And out of this whole bed, there's four fruit. One, two, three, four watermelons. So I don't think it's a great use of space in the bed to get the most out of it. I would plant things like tomatoes, 
peppers, eggplant, cucumbers, etc. So um, that's just my uh, view on things, but um, I just don't think it's a good use. And actually, let me go over here. What we actually did was we did some companion planting where we planted uh, uh, corn, as you'll see here, the corn, and there's some watermelons at the base of the corn. So uh, they seem to have done pretty well. There's one there too. And I think that's it. So there's two watermelons in the rest of our corn. But you can see the corn, let's take a look at this, um, is there. And uh, looks like it should be ready to go shortly. There's another ear of corn. You can see by the size of my hand, it's a uh, pretty decent size. Actually, let me zoom out. Pretty decent size uh, piece of corn. So that's uh, the Missouri City Community Garden. Again, I'll give you another view from the side. I'll zoom out here. Sorry if I'm making you sick with the camera. But you'll see we have uh, you know, all these beds here. Each of the beds are individually irrigated. And the things that can be grown here in the fall, we are growing. And we are giving lots of good stuff away to many people in the garden. Um, one thing I just left out, we just planted last week. These look a little weak, but sweet potatoes. So uh, take a look, you'll, there's sweet potato slips here. And uh, they're looking pretty weak because we just planted them. Um, they will come back. Sweet potato vines are pretty hardy. And as you can see there, we've planted a number of them. And we hope to, in a 90 to 120 days, harvest this. Um, so sweet potatoes also, not regular potatoes, but sweet potatoes do extremely well in the heat. So uh, you can plant them. They do well, will do well. So that's the update from the Missouri City Community Garden. I hope each of you give more and give back to the community. Uh, do something to make a difference in your life. And many of you do already, so thank you for that. But if not, it doesn't hurt. Look at your um, local Yellow Pages, talk to your local charities, see how you can get involved. If you're watching this, you're most likely a gardener and participate and help others learn the art of gardening. So I hope you've enjoyed this update in the middle of steamy summer in Houston. Uh, please, the Executive Gardener channel is all about teaching others. I don't know everything, I just try to share my experiences and teach others that have stressful lives the pleasure of gardening and uh, getting your hands dirty and eating healthy. I think uh, it's something that's great for all of us. We can live a long, healthy life. Please share this with a friend of yours that may be interested in getting in the garden. And give me a thumbs up in the video if you like it. Or give me a comment. So listen, until next time, this is Jeff, your executive gardener, signing out from the Missouri City Community Garden. Have a great day.